Foie gras torchon, an unethical luxury. Having a foie gras torchon for dinner is an experience of a lifetime. The luxury food item is gotten from the liver of a duck or a goose. Its high fat content, creamy consistency, and cost makes it the pinnacle of Western cuisine. So where does the controversy stem from? Why is the king of all hors d'oeuvres considered an unethical luxury? In this video, we're bringing you all you need to know about this one-of-a-kind meal. Make sure you stay tuned and watch till the end to get all the details. Foie gras is a special kind of dish that has a lot of health benefits and is a good source of minerals. Its high fat content gives it a unique taste that's loved by most people. Foie gras is considered a delicacy in many countries, especially France and Hungary. France dominates globally, with Hungary coming second and China third in terms of production volume. This has led several people to conclude that foie gras originated from France. However, a closer look at history proves this to be wrong. The origin of foie gras actually dates back to the ancient Egyptians, who observed that the geese eat more food during winter. This singular action made the livers of the geese to expand. The Egyptian farmers started influencing the process by force-feeding the geese. It became a dish that many enjoyed, taking it with them on trips down the River Nile. Pictures of the Egyptians force-feeding their geese in the past have long been discovered. After a while, the food disappeared, but was later brought back to existence by a French chef named Jean-Pierre Clouz, who turned it into a dish for royalty. Every renowned person wanted a taste of this masterpiece. Years later, it was available on the menu of most top restaurants, at least before the animal rights group took the matter up and saw an issue with the way the birds were being treated. The outcry of the activist groups has led to many heavy restrictions in nations all around the world, including France. Foie gras is now banned in many countries, such as Israel, Germany, the UK, California, and Chicago. The force-feeding process that makes foie gras possible is considered cruel by animal rights activists, who have said that it causes unnecessary suffering to the ducks and geese used for this delicacy. The bird's necks are inserted with a metal pipe three times a day. In addition, they're often force-fed corn boiled in fat, so their livers become fattier and larger than they would naturally be. After slaughtering the birds and bringing out the liver, they're sold out to the public. The foie gras can either be made into the foie gras terrine or foie gras torchon. These are the two most notable foie gras dishes, and they're named according to the vessels used in their preparation. This naming system is common to many classic recipes. For example, there's the iconic cassoulet, named for the cassoulet meaning saucepan in French. While the foie gras terrine is cooked in a terrine mold, the foie gras torchon is made using a dish towel in French. Today, a cheesecloth is mostly used to form the raw foie gras into a cylindrical shape. The process of making foie gras torchon is a bit complex and requires a great deal of patience, but the tasty dish is always worth the extra effort. The appetizer takes three days to prepare, and it can be made at home for your holiday guests or simply for your pleasure. The process is a combination of centuries of exploration into the fields of animal husbandry and breeding, curing and charcuterie, flavor development, and of course, general kitchen skills. The first thing you need to get is a good foie gras. Once the liver is cleaned of veins, it's cured in a mixture of salt, sugar, and pepper, along with a splash of liquor such as brandy or sauterne before being rolled up tightly into a cylinder, typically inside a clean kitchen towel known as torchon in French. After hanging for a few days, it's gently poached, chilled again, then served sliced. You can also decide to spice up your foie gras torchon with bits of toast cooked slowly in butter, with the addition of a topping of finely chopped prunes soaked in a simple syrup made with equal parts cognac and sugar. In the past, foie gras was majorly derived from geese, However, a larger percent of the foie gras produced today is gotten from ducks, specifically mullards. Mullard ducks are a hybrid of Muscovy ducks and domestic ducks, most often pecans. They're raised for foie gras production because of their propensity for accumulating fat in the liver rather than elsewhere in the body. The process by which ducks and geese are force-fed comes with great risk to the health of the bird. It begins at 10 to 14 weeks of age and continues to 12 to 21 days. Any form of struggling from the birds during feeding can result in punctured esophagus, inflammation of the neck, or even asphyxiating because of its handling. The fear exhibited by the birds during the force feeding phase is also an issue. In contrast with the regular hand feeding that gets the birds excited, this particular gavage method causes the birds to avoid the handler. It's injurious to the health of the birds and can eventually lead to their death. The housing experience of the birds is also terrible. 
the water birds are deprived of adequate water for swimming. When the birds are moved from the large barn to the garbage area, the condition worsens, as the birds are housed in small group pens or cages. Ducks may also be housed alone in a cage too small for them to stand, spread their wings, or turn around. The floors of these cages can cause painful foot injuries. This might come as a surprise to you, but a healthy duck or goose liver comprises about 5% fat, whereas the liver of a bird following the force feeding phase is made up of about 50 to 60% fat. This unnatural change in liver composition and size reduces the liver's efficacy at processing fats and filtering toxins. Although liver is generally one of the cheapest meats to buy from the market, the foie is very expensive. This high price is due to the additional labor that force-feeding individual animals requires, coupled with the scarcity. There are only a handful of farms that produce foie gras, and only three in the United States. What is the way forward? Birds are made to go through a lot, just to serve as food, for a set of wealthy individuals at high-end restaurants and on holidays. Despite the suffering that takes place to produce foie gras, some still demand its production. This is especially true in France, where there's a high demand for it during celebrations. Thankfully, producing foie gras without gavage or even slaughter is now possible due to the development of lab-grown foie gras. Though animal cells are still collected from a duck egg so they can be replicated to create the final product, this is a far cry from the suffering of millions of ducks and geese that the foie gras industry presently demands. This simply means that it's possible to eat foie gras ethically. It will help to eliminate the stigma associated with foie gras. Many people simply refuse to eat foie gras because of animal cruelty. One of the companies that's been working on the lab-grown foie gras is the French startup Gourmet. The goal of these companies is to turn cell-cultured meat products into mainstream products. Besides lab-grown foie gras, there are other options that'll help make the foie gras more ethical. This includes Aviwell's innovative method of fattening duck's livers without force-feeding them. To make foie using this method, goslings or ducklings are purchased from local farmers. A bacterial mixture is then prepared and fed to the birds. After three or four weeks of raising the birds locally, they're taken into a reserved space for specialized feeding. Here, the ducks and geese are fed with organic milled corn on a schedule that mimics how the birds would eat if they were preparing for migration that allows them to naturally store fat. They reach full growth at about 10 weeks, and then they're taken to a slaughterhouse only a few kilometers away. The foie gras obtained from this method are now being sold domestically. Those that have eaten it have testified that it's extremely tasty. The chefs have also commended the efforts being put in by the company. Do you want to eat foie gras? All you have to do is decide if you want it the classical or the ethical way. This is an important choice for every human being. What's your decision going to be?